Unit 1, Lesson 5, Into the Deep, Ocean Exploration. Salt water covers roughly 71% of the Earth's surface, and yet we've spent much more time exploring the Earth's mountains, forests, and deserts than studying its oceans. Scientists say that we know more about the moon than we know about our own oceans. And today, we continue to spend more money on space exploration than on ocean exploration. Why is it that we know so little about the oceans that surround us? Perhaps it's because, for centuries, people thought of the ocean as just a travel network. It was a way to get from one place to another. Most ocean travelers stayed close to the coast. Their goal wasn't to explore the ocean, but rather to find new trade routes for the exchange of spices and other goods. To early sailors, the ocean was also a frightening place, full of dangerous creatures. They thought that deep below, the ocean was a dark and lifeless place. Believing this, people had little incentive to explore the ocean depths. Ocean exploration was also hampered by the conditions below the surface. The tremendous pressure of the water would crush an unprotected diver. Water temperature on the ocean floor was not inviting either. Vents or openings on the ocean floor have temperatures as high as 254 degrees Fahrenheit or 123 degrees Celsius. To explore below the surface of the ocean, humans needed special equipment. Early diving suits from the late 18th century and early 19th century were not very useful. One type enclosed the diver's body in a cylinder, making it difficult to move around. A later type of diving suit replaced the large cylinder with a heavy metal helmet. Air from above the surface traveled through a tube into the helmet. These early diving suits allowed people to descend 50 feet below the ocean surface for about an hour. In 1872, the first ship equipped for ocean exploration set out on a four-year trip around the world. The ship had two laboratories, and it carried the most advanced scientific equipment of the time. Scientists on the ship tested the temperature and density of seawater. They gathered information about ocean currents and meteorology. They discovered an underwater mountain chain and more than 4,000 new species. The results of this expedition encouraged interest in exploring farther below the ocean surface. To do this, however, divers needed better equipment to protect them from the pressure of water. Two divers, Charles Beebe and Otis Barton, designed one of the early submersibles for deep-sea diving. It was a large, hollow steel ball less than five feet in diameter and weighing 5,000 pounds. A long, heavy chain connected the steel ball to a ship above. In 1934, Beebe and Barton descended half a mile below the surface of the ocean in their submersible. From inside the steel ball, they were able to see extraordinary creatures. This was a great breakthrough for ocean exploration, for now people could see the underwater world with their own eyes. Since Beebe and Barton's record-breaking descent, improvements have been made in diving equipment, allowing people to travel deeper for longer amounts of time. Just 26 years after Bibi and Barton's half-mile descent, Jacques Picard and two others traveled to a depth of 35,797 feet, or nearly seven miles, in their own much-improved submersible called the Trieste. Even at this great depth, the explorers discovered deep-sea life and new species. The work of deep-sea explorers has given us a picture of life far below the surface there is now greater understanding of the diversity of life in the ocean. We are now more aware of our dependence on healthy oceans. Still, less than one-tenth of one percent of the deep ocean has been explored. Sylvia Earle, one of the leading experts on oceans, says, We're in a new century and a new millennium, and most of the planet has yet to be seen.